Welcome to week one and the start of our day trip at Cal. For this, remember, you're going to need your 12 balls. You're going to want your hook, either bamboo or we've got a nice soft grip one. You're going to want your tapestry needle and some scissors ready to get started. In week one, we're kicking off with the granny square. In our blanket, you can see it here in the turquoise and the sunflower. The granny square is a firm favourite and it's an oldie but a goodie and it's a brilliant one to start off with on your crochet journey. The granny square is also one of my absolute favourite motifs and this is why Serdar reached out in the first place. So we're going to be making our granny square in turquoise and sunflower. You're going to want to make eight motifs in total and that's four of each colourway. If you're new to crochet, don't worry about getting it perfect straight away. The great thing about squares is you can give them a go, trying out your tension in your hand, practicing, making each square, and don't worry if you do a couple and you have to undo them, you can redo them. And what's great about working a blanket made out of squares is that you can pick your best and favorite ones to put in it. Tension isn't critical for this project. You're working in squares and we're joining them together to make our blanket. You just wanna make sure that your squares look smooth and even and line up with each other. We want our, all our small squares to match up in size. So when you're working your different squares, just pile them up on top of each other and you can always ease them into size so they fit together nicely. In our squares, we're gonna learn how to work in the round. Our squares are made up of six rounds and we're gonna be introducing how we hold our hook, how we hold our hand, how we do the chain stitch and then introducing our treble stitch where it's joined together in groups of three to make that traditional granny cluster. I'll be going through each stage in the video and you can go back and watch it as many times as you want till you've got the perfect hooking grip. So grab your hooks and your yarn. You can start with sunflower or turquoise, that choice is up to you. And remember, you're gonna to want to make four motifs, so four of your squares in each of your colors. So let's get hooking. So now we're gonna take our Hayfield bonus DK and we're using sunflower yellow. And I'm gonna show you how to set up your hands and get started. We're first gonna to wanna to get the strand of yarn from our ball, and an easy way so it doesn't get tangled is to take it actually from the center rather than from the edge. So you wanna take your ball and wriggle around in the center to find your strand, and you can pull from the middle. Now we've got our yarn, I'm gonna show you how to set up your hands. I'm gonna show you first with a right-handed grip and then again with left-handed. The first thing we wanna do is create our slip knot and so we're going to take our yarn, and the easiest way to do this is to take our yarn to make a small E and then come through the loop and grab the tail. Hold our tail and pull. This creates a knot that we can pull and adjust to size. So I'll take you through that one more time. So we take our yarn, we wrap around and make a small E, come through the center, grab that tail, hold the tail because you don't want to pull that through. Pull our loop, and then this is a knot that we can then pull and adjust to size. We want to take our hook, and we're going to place our yarn on our hook and pull, but don't pull too tight because this makes it really hard to pull the first stitch off. So when setting up your hands for our first right-handed grip, you can hold your hook in a number of ways. You can hold it like a pen or like a knife. You want to have a little play and see what's more comfortable for you. We're now going to set up our tension in our left hand. When you're crocheting, it's all about tension. So this is the bit that if you're new to crochet, you'll want to practice to get right and can feel a little tricky at first. So we're going to take our yarn and we're just going to hold that tail out of the way. We're going to take our palm, lie our yarn over our palm. I'm going to pinch our first two fingers in come around our middle finger and over the front. And then we're gonna adopt what I call the shadow puppet bunny hand grip. So when you're doing your tension, you always wanna have a little bit of an antenna as this helps get a smooth, smooth tension. So in our thumb and our forefinger, we're gonna grip the tail. And then here, we have that smooth tension. So keeping that sort of shadow puppet bunny and this means that when we're crocheting, we can work over and pull through to create our chains. And actually our tension does most of the work and holds our hand. So I'm gonna take you through that again because it's tricky to remember. So I'm gonna take out my hook, 
So we're going to start with our knot on our hook and I'm going to go through our handhold. So we go over our palm, pinch in, round the back of your hand over the front. So we get our shadow puppet bunny hand over that pinches our tail and you want to hold as close as you can to the knot for the most control. And then we've got this smooth area of tension. Now you can hold your yarn in different ways, but always try and keep that antenna with this area of tension because it means that when we crochet, we can get a really smooth movement. And so how it works, you take your hook over the strand and you catch it and you can see by having an antenna and it getting caught in the hook, it does the work for you. So you can easily pull through to get a smooth chain stitch. So I'm now going to show you that handhold again, but starting with my left hand. Starting with our hook in our left hand, we're now going to set up our tension in our right hand. So we're going to lay over our two fingers again, round the back, and then my thumb and my middle finger are going to pinch to hold. And you can see again, I've got that antenna to keep a smooth movement. And then it means we can come in with our hook, wrap round to grab our yarn and pull through wrap round to pull through. So I'm going to set that up again. So I'm going to take our hook out, pull. Start with our yarn on our hook. And so again, so our left hand is holding our hook. My right hand is going to hold my tension. I come over my little finger, my next finger, round on the top of my hand. And then I come in with my pinch, with my thumb and my middle finger, and this will hold my tail close. And you can see I've got that smooth area of tension ready to do my chain stitch. So I come over, wrap, and that is set up so easily can pull through. Now, if you're new to crochet, before diving into our first granny square, what I suggest is sitting and doing some chain practicing because you want to have a nice, even, smooth tension before you start on your first motif. We're going to kick off with our first square and we're starting with the granny square. This square is going to introduce us to all our basic stitches. We're going to learn how to do the chain stitch, the treble and the slip stitch. And do remember that we're using UK terms. So to start off, we want to have our knot on our hook and grab our hooks. We're going to get our hand held set up, ready to go. So I'm going to introduce you to the chain stitch. And we're going to start by doing four chains. Now we're going to hold our yarn and to do our chain we're going to go over, wrap, hook the yarn and pull through. And when we're doing a chain you only count the stitch when it's off the hook. So we've done one chain. I'm going to repeat that. So round, pull through, that's two chains. Round, pull through, that's three chains. Round, pull through, that's four chains. If you're doing your chains and you can't remember how many you've got, you can lie it flat. The front of a chain will look a little bit like a plait and you can count each V. So we've got one, two, three, four. And remember, you don't count that one on your, on your hip. So to start our square, we're going to make this chain into a circle and we're going to do that by joining it with a slip stitch. So for our next stitch, we take our chain and we're going to take our hip and we're going to go through the very first stitch we did to create like a little U on our hook. And what we can do to get our hand hold nice and easy is you can pinch that to hold it tight. And to do our slip stitch, all that we do is we do a chain stitch, but we pull through both of the loops on our hook to secure. And now we've made like a little donut to start. And this is the very center of our square. To get the height out of our square, because we're now gonna work in trebles, which are a longer stitch, we do the first treble, but it's not really a treble. We work with chains and it makes a fake treble for the height. And it will make our little uh, donut look a bit more like a tadpole. So to start off, we want to do five chains out. So we're going to repeat that process. So wrap, pull through one, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through three, wrap, pull through four, wrap, pull through five. Now, the reason this is so long is because three of these stitches, one, two, three, make up our first fake treble. 
and then two of the stitches are our first corner. So this makes the first treble and the first corner of our square. Now, if you're working right-handed, we're going to work anti-clockwise, but if you're working left-handed, you're going to want to follow the pattern working in a clockwise direction. So I'm now going to take you through our first treble. And so to help us with our handhold, and so we don't get twisted doing our granny square, is you want to pinch the bottom of that donut so we don't have to let go. The trick with crochet at the beginning, especially when you're first learning, is getting that handhold and trying not to let go of your piece too much because then it doesn't become twisted. We're going to start off with our treble. And so to do a treble, which is a longer stitch, we're going to want to wrap around your hook first. So we've got one loop and we're going to take our hook and we're going to work into the middle of our donut. So we're going to go in, we're going to take our yarn from the back. So grab it from the back, hook it through, pull through. And you can see now you've got three loops on your hook. One, two, three. And we're going to now work through the first part of the stitch. So we wrap again, round again and you pull through two of those loops and we're left with two and you want to wrap around again and you pull through two more, completing your first treble. And you can see now it's a long stitch. We're going to want to repeat that one more time. So we wrap around our hook into the donut, grab from the back, pull through to the front. You've got three loops on your hook, wrap around, pull through two, wrap round, pull through two to complete your treble. We're going to do one more of these. So we wrap around our hook into the donut, grab from the back, pull three. So we've got three, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. You can now see from the middle, we have got our middle donut, our first corner, and then three trebles in a row. Three trebles in a row in this pattern are also referred to as a granny cluster. And that's three trebles worked together. Now this is the first side of our granny square. And now we're going to want to do a corner. A corner is two chains. So we chain one and we chain two. And we're going to twist round. What can be helpful as well when you're first starting is push your cluster together so you can see easily where you're working into the middle of that donut. So we wrap around our hook. We're doing three more trebles into that space. So one treble, two trebles, three trebles. And now we've got the next side of our granny square and you can start to see it taking shape. We're going to work another corner, so chain two. I'm going to come round and do three more trebles together in a cluster into the donut. So doing one treble, so remember wrap, pull three, so you've got those three. Wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. Wrap in, pull three, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. And so we're back at a corner, we're going to chain two. And you can see here, we're now, we've got three sides. And this first chain where we started counts as one of our trebles in this cluster. So we actually now, to finish off, only need to work two more trebles into the space. And so now you can start to see that your first round is nearly complete. To finish off, we need to secure with a slip stitch. And we want to join that into the third chain up. So if you look at your little chain that looks like a plait to start, we can count one, two, three. We're going to take our hook, go into the stitch. And remember, our slip stitch is like doing a chain, but pulling through both of the stitches on our hook. So wrap around your hook and pull through both to join. And now you can see we've got our first round of our granny square complete. We're now going to begin on our second round. 
So you want to take your hook and we're going to start off by chaining five again to get our first treble and then our corner. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to treble now into this space, which is our first corner. And we're going to do our first cluster. So we're going to work three trebles into this space. So wrap around. First treble. Second treble. Third treble. Now in our second round, we're not working into the center again. We're working into each corner. So now we want to jump to the next corner. So we're going to work three trebles, two chains, three trebles into this space here. So I'm going to take you through that. So wrap around your hook and go straight into that next corner. Work your first treble. Work your second. Third treble. And then we're going to work our corner one chain, two chains, and then we're going to work three trebles back into that same space. And you can see our corners are where our square extends and that's why we're working two of these clusters into the same space. We're going to repeat that in the next corner. So we're working three trebles, two chains, three trebles in the next space here. So now we're working into our corner again. So we're working three trebles, two chains, three trebles into this space. Our first treble, second treble, third treble, chain two, and three trebles back in to that same corner space. You can now see we've nearly made our way all the way around. So we just need to work back into that first space where we started doing our final two trebles to complete that cluster. Can you see we've got our three chain and then our two chain corner. So our five chain start and this is our first fake treble. So we're working two more trebles into that very first corner. One. Oh, pull three. And now we're ready to join and complete our round with a slip stitch. So again, we're, we're going to want to count up three chains. So one, two, three. And in that third chain, we're going to put our hook through the center of the chain and join in a slip stitch. So wrap around and pull through both stitches on your hook. And you can see we're now on our second round of our granny square. It's complete. We're now going to begin our third round and we're going to be working slightly different patterns. So we're going to be increasing in our corners and then doing one cluster of three trebles in the middles and then into our corner. So I'm going to take you through that. We're going to start off again by our chain of five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to work three trebles into that first corner. So wrap around and work our first cluster into that corner. We're now going to jump to the next space here and we're working in the corners and in between clusters. So we're working into the gap. We're going to do three trebles in this space. So our first treble, second treble, 
third treble. The next space is our corner and so we're going to increase in our corner. So in our corner we're going to work three trebles, two chains, three trebles in the same space. Three trebles, two chain, three trebles. You can now see with our granny square as it starts to get bigger from the third round on that we're increasing in the corners and then along the straights we're just putting one cluster in each gap. So we're back along a straight, so in this gap here we're going to work three trebles. to form one cluster. And we're back at a corner, so we're going to work three trebles, two chains, three trebles in the corner. And we're going to repeat the pattern of working three trebles into the next space along the edge, one, two, three, we're reaching a corner again, so we're working three trebles, two chains, three trebles, got our final single cluster, so three trebles into the space, one, two, three, and then to finish off our round we need to do our final two trebles into that first space to complete that first cluster, so one treble, two trebles. We're going to complete our round by joining into the third chain with our slip stitch, so one, two, three, through the stitch, grab your yarn and pull through everything. We've now completed our third round and we're going to now move on to our fourth round where the pattern starts becoming more easy to follow because we'll be increasing in the corners and working one cluster of three in to each space along the straights. So we're going to start off our round again with our chain of five. One, two, three, four, five. And in that first corner, we're going to work our first cluster. So we're going to chain, no we're not. In our first corner, we're going to work three trebles. So wrap around. One treble, two trebles, three trebles. We're going to work one cluster into each space along the edge. So we're working three trebles at a time into each space. We've worked in each space along to our corner and now we're going to work into our corner and our corner is where we increase so we're working three trebles, two chains, three trebles into that corner chain space. You want to repeat that pattern around your square, so working three trebles into each space along the edge, so you're doing that twice, 
and then in your corner working three trebles, two chains, three trebles. Repeating along each edge. Repeating the pattern along your final edge until you get to your last corner. And when you get round to your last corner, we want to repeat again our two trebles in that first space to complete that first cluster. So two trebles, and then we're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain. So one, two, three. And that brings us to the end of our fourth round. What's really good to do, especially if you're new to crochet and learning with the granny square, is just to check along your edges that you've got four clusters. If we're on the fourth round, we want four clusters along each edge. So one, two, three, four. And you can just check your all the way around and it's really good to check before you move to your next round because then you know that you've got the right amount of spaces to work into. So we're now going to work on round five and there's six rounds to this pattern. So round five we're going to start off again with our five chain. One, two, three, four, five. And working our first cluster into that same corner space, so three trebles. So we're working our three trebles into the space along the edge. So we're going in to form one cluster. So for our edge clusters, we're working three trebles, so you want to yarn over into the space hook from the back, you've got our three loops on our hook, wrap round, pull through two, wrap, pull through two to complete your treble, one, two more, so we wrap around once into the space, grab, pull through, you've got three loops on our hook, wrap round, pull through the first two, leaving two, wrap round, pull through the remaining two. That's our second treble and we want one more to complete our cluster, so wrap around into the space, Grab from the back, pull through, wrap around, pull through two, wrap around, pull through two. And that completes our cluster along the edge. We've got one more. And then working into our corner where we've got three trebles, two chains, three trebles. So in our corner, we're working sort of two clusters with chains for the corner to increase our square. So we're wrapping round for our treble into the space, pull through, we've got three loops on our hook, wrap round, pull through two, wrap round, pull through two. We want two more trebles, so we're wrapping round into the space, we've got three, wrap round, pull through two, wrap round, pull through two. One more treble before our corner chain, 
So wrap round into the space, pull up three, wrap round, pull through two, wrap round, pull through two. Then we're going to chain two for our corner, one, two. We're going to turn along the other direction and work three more trebles into the same space. So wrap around, in, grab, we've got our three loops, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two, wrap around into the space, pull three, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. And our final treble for that cluster, wrap around into the space. We've got three loops, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. Now we're carrying on the repeat, working along the edge, putting one cluster in each edge space and in corners working the repeat of putting three trebles, two chains, three trebles. So working a cluster, two chains and then a cluster into the corner space to increase our square. Working in our final space, we want to do two trebles to complete that first cluster. And we're gonna join in the third chain with a slip stitch. One, two, three. That brings us up to our fifth round. And so you can just check that you've got five clusters along each side. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna repeat that pattern again, working two clusters with the two chain in the corner to increase and one cluster into each space on the way along for our sixth and final row. For our pattern, the sixth row will be our final row. But if you're loving the granny square, this is something that you can just keep repeating the square bigger and bigger and bigger, following this pattern of two in the corner with your chain and then one cluster along your edge. So we're repeating our pattern for our sixth and our final round of our granny square. Oh, don't worry if your hook drops one of your stitches. Unlike knitting, crochet is you don't drop stitches in the same way, so you can just find your loop, place your hook through and start going again. And in our last corner, we're going to do our two final trebles and join in our third stitch, one, two, three, with a slip stitch. And that completes our sixth and final round. We're now going to fasten off, but you just want to double check that you've got your right amount of clusters along each edge. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And then you're ready to fasten off. So to fasten off, what we want to do is take our hook and our yarn and we're going to do one more chain. We're going to grab some scissors and you're going to want to give yourself at least 15 centimetres and snip. And then you're going to bring that all the way through to secure. And that just gives us a long enough end to sew in at the end. And there you've got your granny square. Six rounds with six clusters on each side. 
If you're new to crochet and this is your first square, your first one that you do might be a little bit wonky and will just need a little bit practice. But this is a really good way to get used to holding your hands and your hook, practicing getting that smooth tension and working on your first squares. So we've just had our how-to of how to make our granny square. I hope you enjoyed that and were easily guided step by step through the process. You've now got plenty of time to keep practicing, watching back if you need it. Don't worry, they don't have to be perfect straight away. It's not about things being perfect, it's about having fun and enjoying the process. You're going to want to make sure again that you've got four of each colour, so you've got eight squares in total, ready for your final blanket, but you've got a whole week before we start our next section with our half and half square to keep giving those granny squares a go. You can also join the Serdar Make Along Facebook group, where you're there, you can share your progress, have lots of community support, and I'm going to be dropping in and seeing how everyone's doing as well. I look forward to seeing you next week, and I hope you enjoy getting your granny on. In the next instalment, we're going to be building on the stitches we've already learnt and starting our half and half square. Happy hooking! <laughs>